All right. Test, test, test. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, we're working with technology and looking to upgrade. We are live. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. So, um, Brother Lance is handling the technical duties in the background. And what are we on our first slide? Are we? Um, okay. Thank you. All right. Well, the title for today is uh, prep for preparation for the for the end for the end is prep for the end the real disease the real disease prep for the end the real disease all right well let's start with prayer and then we will uh, move forward with our religious liberty uh, I'm doing it in a little format different format um, before I go any further brother Lance are you able to go on your um, periscope and forward it to all your people. Yes? No? Yes, you done it? or Okay. All right. We'll go ahead and have prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for life, health, and strength. I pray that you will be with my uh, brother and um, the elder and those with the technical side of things. Help them as they learn new technology and uh, the ability to do this streaming in a more efficient way and that we can learn in the process. We pray that those who are listening will be uh, patient with us and more importantly, they will uh, tune in to, to gain understanding and uh, be encouraged as well. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. So. Um, we are at, and see, I'm a little, we're well, not able to see the slides. So would you toggle back to the, um, uh, proclaim with the, with the slide, and then let's go to our next slide. Just show them. <clears throat> so. Day. Okay. Yeah. Day by day. Let's, uh, let's, let's skip our song. I'm, I'm not prepared to sing it, I remember, so we'll go on past that. All right, so we got the, uh, right now I see we have our, um, so we're broadcasting that as well? You flipped it over? No, don't, yeah, I know you're showing me, but I'm asking the question is, just because I see that doesn't mean that you're showing that to the people. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, all right, let's uh, go to our next slide. Let's go to our next slide. All right, we've given our title, and then we'll go to our first section, which deals with uh, my, uh, current events. Yes, we'll go to different world events and current events um, within the area. And so we'll go to our first video, and then we have to, um, all right, so that's on there. All right, great. In this video, um, I believe I turned the sound down. It is of a uh, military veteran who is standing out in the, um, I believe he's Navy. He's standing out in the uh, ocean current and he is um, protesting. It's a silent protest. He is um, there. And so, of course, there's very few people there on the beach. Uh, this was uh, recorded a few days ago. And it's ironic that the very individuals who are um, coming to address him are not following social distancing. So, uh, but that's just, so it, it, and the reason why I put this in here is so that we, under, we see that individuals are, um, as they stay at home, and they hear different things on the news and they see others are out and about and people aren't getting sick and the uh, the numbers haven't haven't exceeded what was projected individuals are, are getting more and more uh, confident and they're getting more and more um, I want the words the word I want to think of I use the word brazen but they're just getting more bolder and then they're saying hey Maybe this isn't what we thought it was or what I was told. I'm going to go on outside. And so we're seeing more and more things. Let's uh, go to our next slide. Uh, uh, 
quick call it throw tip. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Well, in this video, I did not set it up, but in this particular video, it is in Nueva, Nuevo. I turned the sound off. I did that on purpose. Yeah, there's no, well, there was sound on the video, but I just, in case, I had, I previewed it, but I wanted, I, it was real low and I didn't want there to be foul language. But what happened in that video was um, an individual was in no, Novero, Laredo, and he was at a stoplight and it was, where if you understand the cartel and, 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 dr and gangs, they were attempting to carjack the individual. And so I, I show that is we're in a time where your safety is at risk and you need to be mindful that going forward, um, individuals are going to run out of their stimulus money, they're going to run out of it because they're not working, maybe they haven't received their, uh, the unemployment, not saying everyone is a criminal. However, people are resorting to criminal behavior because they, are, um, they don't have the means to take care of those things that they need. So uh, as, we, uh, as we wait to, before we can go to our next video, I'll, I'll, I'll highlight that um, I have another video that will um, show this very thing. Um, so we're still on that. Well, can you advance it to the next one? We're going to play the next one. So. Hope that I got everything in. It's just so filming, showing yes. all a $1,200 on camera. Act like you never had $1,200 before. I'm pretty sure you've got an income tax, probably more than that. When you have this, you know, young lady, she's going to be showing off her money, but I want you to watch what happened. Let's roll that clip. All right, so what happened there is you have an individual who thought that it would be wise to um, show off the monies that they received through the stimulus. And it, it is very strange because we live in a, in a culture where individuals are used to going on social media, showing off their 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 funds showing off what it is that they have um, they feel a need to let everybody in the world know uh, what time they're leaving their home what time they arrive back what kind of car they drive what what they have in their home uh, they use the term flossing i don't know if they still use that word anymore young people use different words uh, different slang terms but ultimately you have individuals who are showing that they have the funds. She happened to have the window open and somebody came along and took, took from her. Uh, so these are the things that are, that are coming up within um, society, within the world. And so we have that to, as an issue. Um, yeah. So let's uh, go to our next, we'll go advance to our next slide. to help reduce the spread of coronavirus. The COVID-19 tracing technology will use Bluetooth to help notify someone if they've been in contact with someone who's infected. The two companies plan to actually roll out this technology on their operating system next month. Nick Thompson joins me now. He's a CBS News contributor and editor-in-chief of Wired. So Nick, tell me, how is this gonna work? It's pretty complicated, but also pretty interesting. You'll have an app that you install on your phone, either Android or iPhone, and it will track what phones you've been near. And then if somebody tests positive for coronavirus, they will upload their information to the cloud. And if you've been near them, you'll get an alert. So if you've been within roughly 30 feet for five consecutive minutes, you'll get an alert saying someone you've been near has tested positive for COVID-19. You won't know who, you won't know where it was, but you can still then take action. 
Nick, so much about the transmission is also about these people who are asymptomatic. They just don't have the signs. Would this also track those people as well? Only if they got a test. If you're asymptomatic and you don't get a test, you don't know that you've ever been positive, then no. But if there ends up being a period where we have mandatory testing or testing becomes so easy and we all just get tested every two weeks, then even somebody who's asymptomatic and tests positive could have that information uploaded and then everybody they've been near would get an alert and that would be a very... All right, so um, I'm gonna let him finish here in just a second. But what it says then is they are they two companies that normally compete against one another, Apple and Google, right? So um, competing giants, giants. Um, I don't know what's the word I want to say. Uh, create a friendship, a collaboration, and. They're going to all in the name of track, tracking. So they're, they're all tracking individuals and it's going to be able to track you by your proximity to other phones. Well, we, we should know already that these, the ability to track between phones is already there. And then these connections go like this, all right? And then they go from even, okay, so this phone to this phone, and then we can go even, what do you want to call it, uh, 3D. So they're actually doing this. This one is coming over to here. This one is coming up to there. That one is coming to there. So you got phones going across here, this one across to there. Um, so what we have is a interweb of, of phones basically telling on individuals. So the reason why I want to highlight this and point it out is you don't have to have a, a chip or um, a uh, type of, what do they call it, those um, uh, tattoos, they're, they're removable, stick on, adhesive, whatever. Your cell phone, because 90% of us who have a cell phone go everywhere, I, I see my uh, brother, whatever, he's got his plugged in, but it, you know, your cell phone is near you. And when you don't have it near you, you're wondering where it is and you're going to check it and that. So your cell phone, by virtue of being on your body and present with you, will be the very thing that um, will be the initial phase of the tracking system. So your cell phone will be that. So they don't actually have to have people take a, a, um, a chip or anything. All they got to do is download an app. So as they say, there's an app for that. There's always an app, an application for whatever it is that they're doing. All right, let's uh, go to our next, um, next video. All right, so we'll switch back. Proclaim, good. All right, um, next video. Half of Los Angeles is unemployed. People are fleeing big cities in droves. The wealthy flee to safety shelters and flee the entire country. And there's great danger ahead of us. Hey, everybody. JJ here. You're watching Bull Boom, Bear Bust. It is Wednesday, and it is April 22nd. Thank you so much for joining me today. A lot of important topics here I want to cover, and we've been discussing some of these issues for quite a while, especially the big cities and how when times are good, when credit's flowing, when people are spending, swiping their credit cards, well, it creates a wealth effect that actually compounds itself because when people spend, then it creates more jobs. One person's spending is another person's income. When people stop spending, then the same thing happens but in the opposite direction. Jobs vanish. Now, I believe that this economic reckoning that we're seeing now was going to happen eventually uh, what this pandemic did is it actually brought it on much quicker and much harder than it would have otherwise. But nonetheless, it was still going to happen. The debt was too great. The debt was too enormous for most people to maintain. And we did see this. Okay. All right. So now he said 50% at the beginning, he said 50% uh, unemployment. 
And most people would be like, they'll balk at that because, oh, 50% uh, of the people are not claiming um, unemployment or have uh, attempted to call in. Well, when he put that number out of 50%, we have to, as, as like he broke it down, you take Los Angeles, where for those who, not all movies are made there, but a large portion, probably 30% of movies made are made on site in California on sound studio sets. So that industry alone for, the, for California is responsible for a lot of business there because you have people that work on site. So that's construction workers, that's food catering, that's um, people who are in the, uh, the clothes designing, creating industry, the video photographers. It, it, it's not just an actor or actress, a director. It's multiple people, people that deal with automobiles that have to bring those to the sets. You've got all this going. You have TV shows that are, that are uh, being air, or filmed daily to, to, to or filmed in groups. You know? So you've got all this happening. Um, and with people all staying in and only the essential workers going out, it is legitimately possible that 50% of the people in a major city are actually working and 50% are not. It could even be greater. I just stopped at 50%. But you really only, when you think about it, what, what are some of the jobs that have to be on? Okay, you need, in a city, you need your uh, police, uh, you know what they call them, first responders, right? So you need your first responders, your police, your fire, uh, and then we'll add in hospital uh, medical, all right? So your EMTs and all that. So you got your first responders. Then you need the people who work for the city services. They need to go to work. The guy who makes sure that the water pumps for your water that gets in your house, the guy that does the garbage, uh, and, the, and the lady, you know, just, there's individuals that do that. You need all these people. You need the people who do city services. They need to be because your city services, your electricity, the one that makes sure that the power grid is still up in your area, that makes sure that nothing uh, over, overloads, overheats, or, or something along those lines. Those people need to be working. Um, let's see what else has to be out there. The, um, the city workers, so when I say city service, I'm just trying to highlight all of them. The city workers that make sure um, the lights are working in your, in your area. Um, they all have to go in, okay? So there are there, but even they don't account for if you have a city over a hundred thousand people, city workers, first responders, and that may count for ten thousand, fifteen thousand people. You still have ninety thousand people staying at home, even if the city, even if the city employees that go, and not all the city employees are going in. You're talking about some city employees that are. Uh, working at administrative point, um, classification, they're not going in. It's just the ones to make sure that, that the uh, services are still going on. So to, to say 50% or more are, and when we say unemployed, they're not working. So they're either unemployed or not working. The number is high, all right? And so to look at it and then to understand that it's going to go back at some point because governors and mayors are realizing that they got to get people back to work um, from an economic standpoint, but some things are not going to go back, and we know that. So we're just highlighting some things. Uh, let's go to, thank you, sir, the next video, and we'll go on and knock these out. An epidemic, either naturally caused or intentionally caused, is the most likely thing to cause, say, 10 million excess deaths. Uh, and that it's pretty surprising how little preparedness there is for it. Now, it's tricky because this is a global problem. So you know, how do countries work together? 
which countries should put up what resources. An intentionally caused epidemic. He just said an intentionally caused epidemic is something we have to worry about. That's interesting because, you know, some people would call you a conspiracy theorist if you actually said an intentionally caused epidemic, but that's what Bill Gates has just told us here. You'll also notice the following. Let me just show you this patent. This is a patent and it's from the Purebright Institute. And basically Positive. what they've done is Positive. patent Positive. the coronavirus. Now, some people. All right. So I wanted to pause it here so that people can look. They can take the time to, because to, people ask the question, well, where did he find this? What is the patent number? You can research this yourself. Um, I'm glad that we are upgrading and, do, and utilizing technology in this manner. You can see. Uh, many times we would do the video or uh, show a slide and there was a distance between the camera and the slide. But now that we've upgraded ourselves a little, you're able to see what it is that we're seeing or we're referencing. And this is important because we are in need of you seeing it so that you can do your own homework. And, then it's, and, and also you can begin to understand why we make the statements that we make, and we, uh, as I say, looks with a side eye at the comments that individuals like um, Bill Gates is making, individuals like uh, Dr. Fauci, individuals, you know, we can go down the line. It, this is stuff that, that is public knowledge or public. You can refer to it. You can find it. And I believe that it is critical for you to be able to do this because if you're not researching it yourself, then you will say, I'm not sure, or you will believe what someone else says. You're going to believe the more famous person. We don't have to be famous to pull this up. Well, all we got to do is do our homework and in turn show you what is there. And uh, yes, sir. Yes. It's it's um, coldness. yeah the coldness it it's at the end of the day it, a great example of what he said is much like well whether they shot first or we shot first we're at war when you really want to do something it you don't you don't worry about how did it begin you just want to now put into place what it is that you're that you mean to put into place and for him like he said at this point it's in it's in it's in the motion so now he wants to give a solution to what it is and so this is just uh one of the um patents you know we could there is other patents where it shows that he um is connected to the cryptocurrency you know uh so but we just want you to see that this does exist Again, you can you can go and uh, research it yourself. You can go to the you know, the patent. You can once you got the number, you can research this on the actual website of theirs. Let's uh, go ahead and forward so we can um, get to our next next couple of slides. So country living, yeah, definitely. So we're in our country living section. So we'll move to the next video, and um, this is one that's very important. Welcome to Tower Garden by Juice Plus. Whether you've already bought a Tower Garden or just want to learn more about it, we're going to show you why this is one of the smartest purchases you'll ever make. Tower Garden is a patented, state-of-the-art vertical gardening system that makes it easy for anyone to grow fresh fruits and vegetables right at home. And you don't have to be a gardener to enjoy Tower Garden. In fact, people who've never grown anything in their lives tell us it's not only a fun way to grow your own fresh produce, but it's also a great way to help you and your family eat healthier by adding more fruits and vegetables to your diet. So what exactly is Tower Garden? And why is it such a smart purchase? Well, as a gardener myself, if I had to describe it in one word, that word would be easier. Easier to start than a traditional garden and a whole lot easier to maintain with a compact, state-of-the-art vertical design that fits easily on a deck, patio, or balcony. Easier for us non-gardeners, too. 
Though the word I'd use would be convenient. Think about it. You want a salad? Just open the back door, take a couple steps over to your tower garden, and there it is. Fresh, healthy, tasty produce. It's like having a farmer's market on your back porch. And while most gardeners enjoy getting out the shovel, putting on the gloves, and digging around in the backyard, more and more are also enjoying a new way of gardening, the tower garden way. Everything you need to start growing is right in the box, with none of the weeding, tilling, and ground pests you get with a regular garden. And to top it off, there's an online resource center to help you every step of the way. You even get to be a part of a growing community of health-minded, environmentally conscious tower garden owners who share growing tips and learn from each other on the Tower Talk online forum. As soon as you start putting your tower garden together, you begin to understand the amazing science behind it. It grows plants using something called aeroponics. Aeroponics is the process of growing plants in an air or mist environment without the use of soil. Tower Garden has a 20-gallon reservoir tank at its base. Here, a pump pushes a nutrient solution up the central column to the top of the tower. On its journey down the tower, the plant roots are showered with the nutrient solution. And this process is continually repeated, providing fresh oxygen, water, and nutrients to the roots of the plants. Because of this aeroponic system, Tower Garden uses as little as 10% of the water usually needed for regular gardening. And since it's vertical, it uses less than 10% of the land. So with that, this is something that um, is doable for an individual. If you can't have a raised bed garden because, like you said, you have a balcony, you have a deck, you have a smaller space of land, or you just want to um, go through the first steps, then this is an option. So um, you definitely have uh, access to water. Uh, you have probably everyone um, has a small little space of area that they could do and you could um, build one of these. You could purchase one if you if you as they do DIY, do it yourself. You could actually build your own. Um, but if you saying, hey, I'm not that tech savvy or that uh, hands on, I just need something I can put the seeds in. It'll do most of the work for itself and it'll grow. This is an option, so definitely check into this for those who uh, want to bring a little country living to their uh, rural, not their rural, I'm sorry, their uh, residential uh, urban dwelling. All right, next video, sir. All right, so this is um, where, you know, I, we talked earlier with the video, 50% of Los Angeles unemployed. Living in the cities is going to be an issue. So of course, individuals are asking, should I move to the country uh, to avoid this pestilence and that? Moving to the country is a, um, for reasons other than running from something or hiding from something. Moving to the country is for the purpose of character building. It is the purpose of being able to have a level of self-sufficiency. So by moving to the country and you are willing to take on that mindset and that approach, you're talking about uh, growing your own food. You're talking about uh, being self-sufficient in that you create your own work. So if you are someone who still wants to work and that you know there are opportunities through um, you can do that remotely online, but what we're talking about though is the most important part of country living is it is for the preparation of your character. So you are detached from the cares of this world in that you don't care about what's on the, the draft was on this last week. So your sports was a sports fan. The draft means nothing to you. You was a soap opera daytime tv fan that's no more and important to you you was a big news uh, hour tv show fan you're not watching these things um, these are things that are not uh you're focusing on um, now will it by being in the country uh, afford you a degree of protection yes when those in the city are going to have far greater problems of as we saw in the video people taking people's money uh, even if you don't flash in it, 
Uh, if people see that you appear to have, they're going to want to uh, find ways of taking it, whether in broad daylight or at night or whenever. These are things. Now, can there be crime in the country? Yeah, there's, there's crime is a lot of places, but there's less crime um, out in the rural area when it comes to being pickpocketed, when it comes to being assaulted like that. So you have, but more importantly, like I said, the, the biggest reason is for character development. You are going into the country. So what does that mean? That means you don't go to the country and bring Netflix, you don't bring Hulu, uh, Disney Plus, uh, HBO streaming, uh, you name it. Everybody has a service. You don't bring that with you. You're not bringing um, movie collections with you, your music, your secular. If you move to the country and you bring all that with you, then you are not allowing yourself to develop your character in nature with God. You might as well stay in the city um, because you can begin a country living mindset living in a city by unplugging, getting rid of your TV, uh, re not, not reducing, you know, because that's when we say, okay, I'm going to reduce certain fatty foods and I'm reduce this. You still have, if you still are eating unhealthy foods, your body is still consuming unhealthiness. So as a, a, the computer language, uh, is it garbage in, garbage, in, garbage out, G-I-G-O, if you're still consuming that, whether you're in the country, the city, you're still um, having the effects of that. But you get rid of these things and move to a rural setting, you are in nature working. You don't have less time to be involved in that. You're living in the city because that's where you're at. I don't have the money yet. I, I haven't built up the faith to move out yet. Um, then you still can um, cut out the, the, the entertainment of this world and, and, and the cares of this world. Because when it says cares of this world, I think people think of, well, I got to care for this. I got to take care of that. Well, if you're busy working, you're busy saving souls, you're busy um, ministering to people, then you're not worried about uh, the cares of this world. Who won the Oscar? Who won the Golden Globe or what other award? Who did this? Who hit the most home runs? Who, who's uh, famous now? Who is doing this and this and that? And who, who, who shot JR? And I, I like to use that old reference because to young people, they're like, that doesn't even make sense. Who is JR? Right? There's a whole bunch of JRs. Uh, but those who remember that, remembered how these are things that have captivated people more so than what has captivated individuals for the winning of souls. Let's go to our uh, next, I believe it's our next section, and then we'll go to our next video. Oh, no, that's, that's right. I got another picture in there. Um, I was talking earlier about the garbage man, or actually I said city workers, and I said, as an example, you want your garbage man working uh, right now because of um, individuals worried about um, having to work during these times. You know, they have planned what they call wildcat strikes, and they're just, they're not organized by the union or the union leadership. They're organized by the actual people. And so uh, garbage men in different places have decided that they're going to go on strike uh, because they didn't like the uh, conditions. And um, this is something that is, that is in the future as um, things get more challenging, you'll see more and more uh, situations like this where people and, – and, the fact that a city service or a company that does a service, because they're contracted, understand, not the garbage men that come and pick up trash, they may not actually be direct city employees. They are under a contract to work for the city to, ref to remove uh, refuge from your streets. You don't want your trash piling up. That's definitely something you don't want. Uh, when you look at pictures, in lesser developed nations and they have trash piled up and what happens with that, that situation. You definitely don't want these things piled up in nowhere, in no neighborhood. So we know that these are, uh, as I say, very essential um, positions. Uh, let's go to our next, next slide. All right, let's uh, take a moment to go into our health section. 
I want to discuss the relationship between your friendly bacteria, your gut bacteria, we're going to call that microbiome, and your immune system. In fact, 70% of your immune system really is this microbiome, your gut bacteria. You have trillions and trillions of microbes living in and around your body that are constantly exchanging with you. You're giving them a, a place to live, and what they give you is immune protection, they give you nutrients, they help your blood sugars, and they give you other things that are beneficial. There's over 10,000 different species of friendly bacteria in and around your body. And 99% of them are non-pathogenic. They're the good guys. The great majority of microbes in your body are living in the large colon, just above and in the mucus layer. And then you have the colon cells, and then you have another layer of protection where you have certain immune cells or guards waiting for an invader to pop through so they can attack and eat them up. What happens is when you have an imbalance in the microbiome, you start to lose your gut lymphatic layer. You start to have a decrease in your lymph nodes. You start to have less antibodies. And antibodies are those things that attach on microbes. They don't kill the microbes. They put a tag on them for other immune cells to kill them. Antibodies are very specific to different pathogens. And then you also have a decrease in the T cell production. And T stands for thymus because the thymus gland helps train uh, the T cells. And you're gonna have less of that. The primary function of the thymus gland is central tolerance. Able to tolerate your own cells that are beneficial to you. Because if you did not have that function, these soldier cells, they're like special forces, would not be able to tell the difference between the good guys and the bad guys, and they would end up killing both of them, and you would end up with your own body cells getting attacked. That is a condition called an autoimmune disease. Autoantibodies are antibodies that are basically attacking your own tissue, but they're not really attacking. They're tagging your own tissue as being a bad guy, and other immune cells, like T cells, are going in there and actually trying to attack them, and that creates inflammation. And when you have autoimmune conditions, you always have inflammation, and that's really what's happening. You're getting this constant attack. And because the microbiome is so heavily connected to your immune system, when you lose this, you lose this, and you lose the tolerance, and you lose the ability to learn to differentiate now we have a situation where we have a lot of friendly fire and we have a lot of collateral damage in the body and a lot of inflammation. T cells not only differentiate between your cells and a pathogen cell, it's quite amazing that your body has this ability to differentiate trillions of cells from pathogens that are not necessarily your cell, but they're so intimately involved and they're such a helper to your body that your body has developed a system to keep them alive and not attack and kill them. And also there are certain T cells that suppress inflammation. So if we lose that, what do we get? A lot of inflammatory conditions. If we also don't have enough microbiome, we get less small chain fatty acid. And one would be called butyrate. And butyrate is not only helpful in balancing your blood sugars and definitely improving insulin resistance, but it's also there to help improve your immune system. Also, you have less ability to make B12, B1, vitamin K, biotin, and even lactic acid, which makes the environment for pathogens very uncomfortable. Also, the microbiome are hoarding the food and the space to also limit the amount of pathogenic bacteria to exist. And the less microbiome you have, the weaker the intestinal barrier, and then you start getting leaky gut. And I really think, and this is my own opinion, that autoimmune disease starts in the gut. If you ever talk to someone who has an autoimmune disease, and I'm talking about like Hashimoto's, Crohn's, lupus, MS, they almost always have a gut problem. In my other videos, when I talk about uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus, the way that that virus attacks your cell is through a receptor called the ACE2 receptor. Well, it just so happens that your gut 
has way more ACE2 receptors than the lung tissue. So this is another mode of entry into the cell that goes beyond just your lung infection, which is quite interesting. If you wanna know what to do to support the microbiome, check out this video right here. All right. So one of the things is, just to highlight, you have to um, have a healthy diet. Part of having, um, as they talked about your gut, it's interesting that in your upper and lower intestines is where um, the most important part of your nutri nutrition is. Um, because by the time what you eat and how it, how it is broken down by your stomach and, and the different processes in your, um, uh, man, why is it? It's not your, because you have the, um, the system, not your circulatory system. You have your, um, it'll come to me. But your, you know, you go, your food, you die, you know, you chew it. Then it goes into the esophagus, slides down. And as it's going down, your body is um, breaking it down through different, um, there are different uh, digestive juices. There is different enzymes. That's the word I'm trying to think of. Enzymes that come. So as an example, if you eat fruit, fruit, the enzymes that digest fruit are different than the enzymes that digest vegetables. So this is where you'll get gas. So you'll have uh, different reactions in your stomach when you eat fruit and vegetables at the same time because the body cannot process them both efficiently at the same time. It has to work on one, and then it has to work on the other. And so while the one is sitting to the side and the body is, is, is breaking, it, breaking down the one with the enzymes and taking the nutrients out to transition it so when it goes down and passes through your intestines and your upper and your lower and then it goes out, your body is so efficient that by the time it, it, it uh, escapes through uh, the bowels, every bit of nutrients has come out of it. The problem that we have is, is when we talk about diet, when you don't have uh, foods that are nutrient in ri uh, rich, nutrient rich, naturally, not something that they added where they, you know, they, when like you say, it's enriched, it already should have it in it by virtue that it's come out of the ground and that it was in the sunlight and, and, and it came through a natural nature pro process that God has ordained. When they add it, the body has to work now to, to, to take that out of there. And the more work it has to take to um, get the nutrients out of the food that we eat, the less efficient it is and the more energy that is expended. So it's like that proverbial, the body takes one step forward by getting a nutrient out of the food we eat, but then it takes two steps back because it takes so much energy to get that out of there because it is not the best um, source of that. So, or if it's not the best source, it has been genetically modified. It has uh, been blanched or bleached, you know, like flour when you, you know, you change it and you take it and it's bleached and now you have the white flour. It's not, it doesn't have all the nutrients that the wheat natural flour has. Um, so these are just examples of, of, of food, things that are in our diet that are, are not the best. So when they're in our gut, because of the diet, it makes us susceptible to have, what, poor immune systems, poor health. Even though we may look full and, and um, I hate to say fat, we, we look full, we look you know, we don't, we're not looking skinny, but it's not healthy weight because the body has only stored up things that it didn't know what to do. So it put it in the fat cells and it's not um, good for you. Thank you. I appreciate that, sir. So you have, and, I, and I'm going to come close and read it. It says, God's healing plan. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. Genesis 129. Our, uh, our nutrients should come from um, those things that, that come from the ground that God has designed for us. We should, you're getting any extra money, you should be utilizing it 
at this point to get healthy things in your body because now at the most this at the most opportune time if you're if you have fear of any disease or any illness you want to have the strongest immune system so you give yourself a fighting chance to not be susceptible to um, some type of sickness because if you don't give your body a chance you're you're basically saying come you know whatever Ill- illness disease whatever come on to me and the door is wide open you're basically just like saying opening up your front door and saying criminal come on in and many times we do that with ice cream and with sweets uh, with soda with fried foods you know we have these foods that are fried and they're fried and you know that the food tastes good when it's when it's warm and it's out of that grease but then after a while it doesn't taste as good it's because once that 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 grease has cooled down it's no longer has that same flavor and it's no longer that same consistency it actually uh, all of us have seen crisco right when you heat it up it's in a liquid form, but when it's sitting on your, in, your, in, in the container on your uh, stove or, or in your counter or in your cabinets, it's in a white, creamy almost looking form. Well, that's what it looks like in your body when it's cooled down. Plain and simple. I mean, we don't think of it like that, but it doesn't stay in a liquid form in your body, even though we're in, what, 98 point something, 7 degrees. It, that still is not enough. It doesn't stay in that liquid form. It it turns to that whitey substance in our body in its small amounts and ends up as an as a, a issue for our body now to have to deal with. And while it's spending energy and resources within the body, cells and, and things to take care of that, when it should be building up a defense against whatever ailments there. Um, this is why we have to really look at what we're consuming within our diet. Um, this is where frying less and baking more is better you bake it if you know don't don't cook all the nutrients out of it whatever it is if you're cooking your vegetables don't cook all the nutrients out of them allow them to to seep in water you can warm them up but then you eat them eat them raw as much as possible too Um, eating raw vegetables as much as possible will curb or help to curb your your appetite because your body's going to say, hey, it senses it can only take in so much food. And you, you, you will find that you don't overeat on vegetables, but you will overeat on Oreo cookies, French fries, fried food of any type. Uh, you'll eat way more than you should. And you know it. You're just like, man, I, want, man, I got a taste. And you're fooling, but you still want that taste. Your body has a sensation there. But you eat enough raw vegetables you eat you some fruit in that, and you, you start to, when your stomach, before your stomach gets full where you feel that bloated sensation, your body's already going to say, nope, um, we're going to stop here right now. Even those who like to eat vegetables, you will find that you, will, you can only consume a certain amount before the body will start to say no, no, no. So this is definitely having a, a, a healthy diet is critical. Let's go to our next, go to our stewardship. Got several good videos there. We're going to bring up uh, Mr. Gates again, but there's a gentleman there that's going to be talking. That's going to be, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, let's, or I think yes, that our first one. Yes. If you drive interest rates down to zero and uh, all the countries print money like crazy, it's lifted the asset boat for everybody. And I think it really is. So they didn't have anything else to do in the Great Recession. And so they took the only weapon they had and used it aggressively. I don't think we should quarrel with that. It did cause the people who were already rich to get richer. And, and but that wasn't a, done on purpose or anything like that. And I think that will correct automatically. automatically. Do you think we should still be using that? <laughs> okay, so this gentleman, Munger, um, he's, he's a very interesting character. He, see, a lot of people, I don't... I don't know who all the billionaires are. We know of Buffett and Gates because they like to, they say they don't want to be out in the public and they try to be low key, but they like it. Um, 
they naturally are in front. Buffett has a company that requires him, in a sense, not to hide. He has to make public statements in that. But he prefers, whereas Bill Gates loves to talk in front of people and cameras to a degree, but he wants to say what he wants to say. He doesn't want to. But this guy, Munger, here he is. He's speaking, and he says, okay, we're, they're printing money, doing the, you know, and, and it created these problems. And then he said, well, they didn't mean to, because uh, he, he acknowledged that the rich got richer. But then he said, oh, well, uh, you know, it wasn't like it was the purpose. Well, what purpose was it then? Go ahead, sir. That's it. Than else. Yes. That's yes. And, and we all know that person who wants to let you know that they're real smart. Uh, they use big words or they come up with ideas and concepts. And sometimes, you know, and it's not to digress, um, people who want to, to be recognized that way will even make statements or talk about an idea that's really like, like okay, I, I heard an individual. Um, he, he, he was talking to somebody I know, and he told them about this idea and concept that, okay, in Genesis, um, in the first chapter of Genesis, right there when it says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and there's like a pause, and then there's a, I can believe in verse two, it, it, in verse one it says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and, and, and they're trying to say that from that point all was created, and then they say, when the Lord comes back and says, and he goes day by day how he created, they said there was, there was a space and time, there was a, the first race of people created, and they go into this whole, because they wanted to say, I'm so smart and I'm so well learned in things, but it was ideas that had nothing to do with anything. Um, and, and, or others that say, like as an example, if you're familiar with the uh, 5% nation of um, they will talk about, um, what is the word that they talk about? Like they'll talk about the, um, the existence of water and whether or not water is, um, I don't want to use the word, I'm trying to think of the, how, they, how they use it. They will, they, metaphysical, the medical physical effects of, uh, med medical, metaphysical existence of water. Well, water, we use it to wash ourselves with, we use it to drink, we use it in machinery. We have a lot of functions for water. But delving into the water itself for the average person means very little for the simple purposes. We use it for, for a purpose. And spiritually speaking, water is for baptism. But outside of that, but, but the reason is, if you ever hear individuals that are, like you said, are big on that. And I know I digress, but it's just interesting because, like you said, you always find those individuals. But when you really ask the, the hard, pressing questions of just, what are you going to do with that information? And how does that help you spiritually? How is that going to help you uh, be saved? How is that going to help someone else be saved? They don't have anything. that They can't tell you. It's just more of, look at me, listen to me. So I pray that I don't have... The, the, the moment of that where I am talking this talk without a purpose. The purpose of anything that we talk about and whether it even sounds deep when we talked about CERN or we talked about different things was to understand that it's fulfilling what the Bible has said, that man is going to do certain things. He's going to, you know, um, uh, knowledge increases. Men are going to run to and fro. Men's knowledge of the word increases. But man's knowledge of, of, what's ha of things in this world are increasing. And man is finding more devious ways uh, to do the very things that they were doing. Sir? When you said that, you started laughing. Yes. They all started laughing. All yes. The billionaires in the room started laughing. Because there's a reason why they're billionaires. They, you just, there are people who make good money doing what they do, but they're not billionaires. There's a reason. You, you, just, you can't say that you, you're not seeking to gain more money. Uh, Warren Buffett's company, the whole purpose it exists is to maximize shareholders' wealth. It has no other existence. He, his company buys companies that are profitable so that in turn, the, um, the investment that he's put into them will return and he pays out what's called dividends to, his, to those who have shares in his company. So his, the company he has makes nothing. It creates nothing. 
it does none of those things in nothing tangible except what they call wealth. And even that wealth is still unrealized because you might have, say, I don't know, 100 shares, 1,000 shares, or one share. Well, the value of it is only worth what somebody else can afford to pay or willing to pay. So it, in the, and this is why it's important to these guys, particularly Warren Buffett, if the economy goes down, so does the value of his company and those shares. So now a person who has put money and resources into it ultimately can lose it. Whereas, say, say you own something that makes, I don't know, makes widgets. Let's just use that as an example. You make widgets, you still, and people still need widgets, even with the economy down, you may not make as much for each widget, but people still need it. And as long as there's a demand for it at some point, you can gain. But there's, people don't have to have these stocks and bonds. But, but again, it goes back to that. So I know I digressed a little. Let's uh, let, let it play out so that people can hear the rest of what they're saying about the markets. A weapon, even. All problems, and eventually I know that will fail. Singapore, which has a marvelous economy, has zero debt. If I were running the world, I would like the United States to be in that position. That is not the typical. That's that's nobody's position. No, all these politicians in Europe and America have learned to print money. And if we keep at these extraordinary measures for the Fed, I guess not just the Fed here, but central banks around the globe. Yes, but who knows when money printing runs out of control? And we, at the end, if you print too much, you end up in something like Venezuela. You, you're not suggesting that happens anymore. No, soon. but I, I, yeah. I, I don't like the idea. And both parties, you have politicians, say, what we've learned is we can print all the money we want. Right. We don't have to raise taxes. We just print. Warren, you share those concerns? Yeah. I, I, I probably could not have conceived of a world uh, as recently as 10 years ago. I, learned, I, I would not have conceived of a world where you would have full employment, 5% uh, budget deficits, uh, with actually the probability of those rising from that level. and. At the same time, have the long bond of three percent. I would have said that that uh, couldn't happen. And then, then people now you have this modern monetary theory, which there's no question you should borrow. Any country should borrow money in its own currency. I mean, that that, that is not like it's some great discovery or something's been announced. But that, no, it can be overdone. Uh, yeah, and that and that's the point. I mean, it. it, it that hasn't solved anything, just to say well, it's much safer to borrow money in your own currency. Uh, but the, the convergence of these factors would have seemed impossible to me. And generally, if I feel something is impossible, it's going to change <laughs> over time. I don't know in, in what way, but I don't think we can continue uh, to have these variables in this relationship. Now, if we can, then stocks are ridiculously cheap. So, you had the three men there. Um, you can watch a, more of the video, but the issue is printing money continually. Uh, right now, we sit at over 22 trillion uh, in debt on the debt clock and that number is rising and with each stimulus package it's bringing it up by trillions so by the time they vote in the second uh, um, um, the second stimulus package and possibly a third we will be over 30 trillion dollars in physical debt is what it says but then Right now we're at, and, and, and I know my numbers are incorrect just because it's rising at an astronomical number. 
we're we last I checked, we were at 146 trillion, 146 trillion, 100. So 100 trillion dollars over almost 150 trillion dollars was called derivatives. That's a whole nother creature of its own. That is that's that is debt based on debt. Um, trying to think of how to best explain that real quickly. Okay, a, a way of explaining that is, you go out and max out a credit card and get cash advance. So you owe the credit card company five. I'll, I'll do it on the board. Um, we get, we, so is it, okay, so you do a credit card debt and so 5K, 5,000 from a CC credit card. Then you take that money and you go and, which this is happening, this is actually happening. People are gambling their, their, their real money, their, because they're sitting at home, but you gamble that, okay? So you gamble it over here and you lose. So I'm gonna put an arrow down, so you lose the money, right? But you gamble it in such a way as you lose more. So you, what you do is you take 5,000 and you gamble it and you actually lose, that's just for numbers, you, 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 you lose, you, 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 you say, I'm gonna gamble and I double dare you. So you put double down, but you only had 5,000 to cover. So you lose, so now you owe 10. So we just keep it at 10. So you're down 10K, right? So you owe an additional 5,000. So total you down, you lost the five plus you lost five more. So you're down 10,000. So you, you owe five of this to the credit card company and five to the gambling people. So you've now that, so why I'm saying that is so derivatives for real simplistic is derivatives is the 10,000. But what the government has done or allowed through companies is people have been able to gamble with stocks to where that 10 and that five is not, they didn't double down, they, they tripled or quadrupled down. So instead, this is actually more like 50K that's owed. Five is owed to the credit originally, but another 45,000 is owed out there because of gambling it away on, on it. So this is interesting. That's why you have a uh, hundred trillion dollars that's owed in derivatives. And it, you know, it, these things go back to those junk bonds and that. Uh, we, uh, it was shared and we, we dialogued, I was dialoguing with someone about how um, money that is being loaned to countries, the collateral that is being accepted is their junk bonds. Junk bonds are things that are basically, they're straight up a gamble. So you can begin to see that people are taking the gambled money even and saying, well, if I can just hit, then I'll be able to pay it. But you understand how gambling goes. There's a reason why people are addicted to it. You never ever win or you win very little and it just keeps you coming back. So it's definitely a, a, a system that is, is, is negative. And this is why when I was, uh, for the last five years, we've talked about Venezuela six, it might even be more. Venezuela's slide downhill was they thought they could do certain things to, to fix their problems, uh, print money, do these things, but it only made the money less valuable. So it took more money to actually purchase the same things. So it actually goes in, in reverse. So why we're saying that is when they're giving out stimulus, it's the same effective way of what? Printing money and you're giving it and you're just saying we're going to pay it on the back end, which when are we ever going to pay it? We still hadn't paid the debt that we already have. Um, this is why this, we know, and I, and I highlight this in our stewardship section, is your money's in the bank, your, your 401k, you cannot lean on that for your assurance. Your assurance has to be on the Lord. If you don't lean on the Lord, you will not be able to make it through. And you need to uh, pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit daily so that your heart is changed and you have a heart that is, that is changing toward the things of this world and that you don't have such a love that you're just, oh, I, I've got a, my money in the bank 
is going to take care of you. Because no matter how much you have, it still can't take care of you when uh, the calamities of life come. It is the Lord who can't take care of you. Many people are sick now, and no matter how much money they have, if they could trade all their money to be healthy, they would. So you want health. You want the Lord protecting you. You want his covering. You uh, The promises, uh, Psalms 34, 7, the angel of the Lord encampeth around about those that fear and love him. You want those to be your promises that you are, are upheld to. Then you want the monies because we see in the word of God that it talks about the church of now, that it's, that it's good and, and it says that I'm full with riches and, and it's doing well. And, and that's, a, that's an issue. Matter of fact, uh, let's go to the next slide. I believe that will uh, that ties right in. If it's not that one, yes, go ahead. Rule number two, donate your stimulus money. Rule number three, donate it to evangelists, North American evangelists who haven't had an offering in a month. Donate your stimulus money. Donate your stimulus money. Donate your stimulus. Now, the person had it in a loop, but I just highlight that is you have individuals of uh, these uh, TV evangelists and that who have high uh, overhead are saying, give your money, give your money. Now, we know that the, there's a famous scripture text that is quoted by those who are, are saying give because you have the widow who gave her might when she came to the temple. As you look through the word of God, you will see how individuals are commended or commanded to give. You will see in the word of God what you give from a cheerful heart. At the same time, we also can see where monies uh, um, and, and by those in leadership were done wrongly. We see where the, um, was it Nadab and Abihu, and I believe it was also Samuel's sons, uh, Eli's sons and Samuel's sons that caused individuals not to want to come to the temple because they were uh, basically shaking the people down. I share that is because it is a matter of prayer with the Lord as to how you are to use the resources that he's given you so that you become a good steward. Because there are many who are going to say, give, give. And giving to their ministry, when you research their ministry, you'll find that they're not helping, they're not returning it. The majority of their monies go to uh, overhead, basically paying salaries and um, fancy things. So am I saying not to give? I am saying let the Lord lead you and guide you to who and what ministries you support and give to. Otherwise, you will, you will give with a cheerful heart. But the sad part is those individuals will utilize it wrongly. Now, you give and you don't know, those individuals will have to answer to the Lord. But do your best to research who you're giving to to understand what is it that they're doing and what it, do I believe in the ministry that they have? And by supporting that ministry, you are, uh, because you believe that you are being fed spiritually by that ministry. Because if you're being led astray, uh, it does no good to, to be giving your funds to, to a ministry that is not uh, directing you in the right way. So that's, that's what I will say on that. But again, what he is saying, many other uh, individuals who are money first and, and ministry second or ministry third, fourth, or ministry not at all, they're thinking it. He just was bold enough to say it. So at least you know he is honest and where he's coming from. And uh, again, there are, uh, as he said, there are missionaries, there are ministries that are doing frontline work, meaning they're helping the poor, they're feeding, uh, they're helping the sick, uh, feeding and clothing the poor. Definitely support them. Definitely give to those agencies and those that, and, and I'm going to be careful not to speak any names, to insult any of them. Definitely look to see because unfortunately a lot of agencies give, and you can look on the United Way of all the different agencies uh, that are listed. You can do the homework to find out how much of the monies that go in are actually given out in, in resources to people. Uh, if you find that 10% go to the people and 90% go to the organization, 
then that's not an agency or entity that you want to be supporting. But if you find that it's 30% that they're keeping in-house and 70%, you can say that's respectable. They got to pay salaries. They're not overpaying. They don't have a, a CEO that's making hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're making, you know, a, a fair wage, you know, because the Bible does say a workman is, is worthy of his, of, his, of, his, of his wage, you know, when they're doing the work of the Lord. But you just don't want to see an imbalance where they're keeping the majority of the monies because that is some of the problem of why uh, the needs of those in the world are not being met is because large corporations spend more of their money advertising and, and getting your attention to give the money than they actually do of doing something with the money. And that is the sad part uh, about. So when people think about it, there's billions of dollars that go into giving. The problem is very little of it actually is seen going to the, to the uh, very people that are supposedly being helped. And, and, and that is, is, is a sin. Uh, matter of fact, uh, the real disease, I'm about, we'll get to it in a moment. I'm going to give you a head. Sin is the real disease. And that's what we're seeing all across the board. It is a, there is the sickness of sin. Let's go to our next uh, video. Uh, right. is, that a, is it a slide? Or is it a, a picture? It's a picture. All right. Uh, this one is, um, and I guess it should have been in our section on the Pope updates. Yeah, it says can the Pope? Yeah, this is still in our financial section. Can the Pope uh, or the Vatican redesign our economy? In an interview with Cardinal Turkson, I, I highlight this is because Forbes, Forbes magazine. This is not a Vatican publication. This is not any religious vat publication. This is Forbes magazine that deals with the Forbes. Uh, 400 richest people in the world did. So this is, it deals with wealth, it deals with business, it deals with these things. It's asking this question, can the Pope's Vatican redesign our economy? Why is it that the economy needs to be redesigned? And if so, why is it, why is it being proposed or asked the question of the Pope doing it? The Pope is a religious figure. So why is it that a religious figure is even being questioned to, to redesign an economy? Now, I know that he, is, he has a dual role, and he's also a leader of his country, uh, and that is the Vatican City. The question still remains, though, is what, why, what role does the Pope have? And, and it's one of those questions where, I, like I said, I know the answer to, but I'm asking it so that you will think about it that Forbes magazine would think it important to say, what can the Pope do? What does he say should be done? And how can he have input in redesigning the economy? So, because if he designed an economy, redesigning the United States economy, he might as well redesign the world's economy. Basically, if he's going to, uh, if you look at it, the United States economy is pretty much the biggest in the world so that's like going into your home and finding the biggest room or the most viewed area, which is, say, your living dining room area, uh, and redesigning that. Well, if you're going to redesign that it's drastically, you might as well redesign the whole house, which means to redesign the whole world's economy if you're going to start with one because the American economy is interconnected with everybody else's because of a lot of different reasons. One, the petrol dollar. Everybody has to trade in the, in the U.S. dollar to uh, we buy stuff from every different country. So if we change, they got to change because they got to adjust to whatever type of monies we use or how we use our monies. So it's just interesting, though, because the Pope has proposed a Green Deal or a uh, environmental economic deal. So therefore, any redesign of the United States economy or the world's economy is going to be in conjunction to, related to, or uh, modeled after the uh, green uh, proposal that he has, which is in, the, in his Laudato Si. So that already spells it out. And when we look at the history of Rome and uh, the Catholic Church and what it proposes, it is not beneficial to a uh, capitalist society or many other free world, free economies, they don't, their model 
does not, is not congruent or connective to. Their model is more connective to socialism, communism, and those other isms, not capitalism. All right, we'll go to our next one. All right, um, then let's go to the video. This is a section where we talk about human trafficking that. But I found this video because it's, it's some disturbing information. The U.S. state of Texas has banned nearly all abortion services as part of its response to COVID-19. Texas is among eight U.S. states facing legal battles over restricting abortion access during the pandemic. The authorities there are calling them non-essential procedures during a public health crisis. It comes as some clinics are now experiencing a spike in requests from women hoping to get an abortion while they still can. The trust Women Abortion Clinic in Kansas reported an up to 400% increase in patients recently. We talked to Julie Burkhart, the chief executive of that clinic. She says that women are under a lot of additional stress during the pandemic. I, the, the pandemic has affected our clinics um, greatly. Uh, we have seen a 300 to 400% increase in our patient load. I think there are a couple of reasons. One is, um, you know, we are facing a global health crisis with the coronavirus. And so people are very uncertain if they're going to stay healthy or not. We've had millions of unemployment claims filed. People have lost their jobs. People are still losing their jobs. And we have absolutely seen uh, women coming in saying, you know, this is not the time to bring another child into their family because they're unsure if they're going to be able to financially support that child. So we're seeing um, death by fear. So the um, abortion or aborting of children is on the rise. Um, this is another, um, this is Satan, another di indirect correlation of Satan reducing population. And I say Satan because uh, he is the one who would uh, be pushing that. The Bible tells you he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, yes, people can choose to, uh, there's choice. However, Fear is driving many individuals' choice. And the numbers are rising now uh, across different states for uh, it, the, what they call the elective procedure, but it's abortion. They're, so the numbers are rising, and it went from 90-something up to 400 in, for a month in an area. It's going to go up even more because you have individuals who stayed home for the last five, some people six weeks. You know, somewhere in there, four to six weeks, they've been at home. Uh, so you have individuals that are married, individuals that are dating, whatever their, 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 their status is, married, divorced, uh, they are still having sex. Maybe not as much, maybe more. That's not even the question. So with that being said, there are conceptions that are happening now. So within the next couple of months, you're going to see an even more spike in abortions and that because individuals are going to say, I am choosing not to. This is not the time. I didn't prepare this and that. Even though knowing that when you have sex, that is a, that is a possibility. It's a high probability. Um, even with a lot of there's there's no, there's no prophylactic or procedure that's a hundred percent sure. There's things that, that's why you say ninety nine percent. It could be real close. The point is, we're going to see this number increase over time, and it was something I hadn't even thought of as as a um, uh, uh, a result of people being in the home, the the uh, the epidemic, the event, or whatever the term we you choose. So we've seen that this is going to be a rise, and it's sad, uh, a, a sad circumstance of this is that there will be a, another large group of, of individuals who will never see this world and have the opportunity to contribute to, to uh, 
to the world at large because they will not uh, be given the chance of life. But again, uh, mankind's fear and um, their lack of doing the proper preparations to make sure that they didn't get pregnant will be factors in this. Um, there's a lot of other reasons why people get pregnant, but ultimately uh, this is still something that, because it, many people that are not married, um, women that are getting pregnant and they're not married, they're fornicating. Whether they believe in the Bible or not, it's still a sin. So therefore, if they did not, but that's, you know, again, easily said, people are going to, to uh, do what they choose to do, but there are re results to it. So uh, this is one of those. And so this is an increase um, in the demand for it. So, and, and, and one thing I will add, an individual who's never had an abortion does not fully understand, particularly I'm talking about the woman, what goes into this procedure and how it will impact her for the rest of her life. Even the male who finds out that he, uh, his uh, partner, wife, girlfriend, whatever the status is, was pregnant and chose to terminate, whether that person knew, uh, was part of it, does not understand. Uh, because again, if you're able to do this and it does not affect you or touch your heart for this loss of life, even though you were part of the process, you made the choice, you have been desensitized because to be able to know that there was life within the woman and that it is no more because there's the procedure, you know that it is. The doctors have to tell you that and to go through that and it not bother you. Um, that's, that's a very dangerous position to be in. And um, I do not, um, I hope, I pray that no one has to go through that. Uh, but I know individuals who have, and I know that to this day, 20 plus years later, it still um, haunts that person. And that is a sad thing because individuals don't understand that those choices and decisions can even go to where when you want to have children, you're not able to because it is not, the procedure is not one that unfortunately cannot leave scars both uh, mentally but also physical scars that um, can affect the ability to, to procreate at a later time. So it, it's definitely something that um, should... I'm going to dare say should not be considered, but if an individual does, they need to, to first you are prayerfully considered, and if you prayerfully considered, you're not going, I believe you wouldn't be led to do that. Um, if you consider it, you need to look at all the, the health issues, all of the precautions, and definitely make sure that you are not, uh, for, this is one procedure that you don't want to take the, uh, go the cheap route. That's the best way I could say it. You don't want to, you want to make sure that you are, uh, have know everything about those who are doing the procedure, all that you can learn because your safety and your, your very health is at risk. Your life is at risk because you can still have complications directly associated with that termination. And, and so um, it would be my prayer that, it, that, it, that you never, it, women never have to experience that and men never have to, to find out that that was the case because it's something that can not be undone. Let's go to our next uh, video. All right, we're at this end. We're so that's our next slide will be. Um, I believe it's yes. The real disease. The title of our scope for today was uh, prep for the end. The real disease. And that real disease, as I alluded to, or I spoke of just a moment ago, is sin. Sin. Sin that comes in. A uh, majority of the sin that we take in comes in through the eye. We watch it. Uh, we read about it. Uh, we take it in um, visually. Now, you do hear about things. 
Um, other people will speak things, you know, that you're listening to. Uh, people will engage in their own acts of sin uh, individually. But the majority of the sin that we take in is through the eye. If we would simply take the time that we spend taking in, and I'm excluding myself in that, and, excuse me, we take that time and direct it toward the Word of God, we can uh, change the course of our life, the lives of others and those around us, and we can prepare ourselves for heaven. I want to leave with you. Um, if you, I want to, the Great Awakening. Let's let's do this. I'm gonna I want to review, and then we'll go right back to that because we're we're gonna close at this. The the real disease is sin, right? So that's what I wrote up there. If you can see it. So the things we talked about. We talked about protest at the beginning. We talked about money being stolen, uh, individuals showing off their, what they have. We talked about uh, the competing giants and the tracking software that they will have to um, find out if you have been in contact with or come across someone else, which basically, by putting this app in, it's going to be able to find out who you've been by, who you know. So where you saw the app, ask the question, you're at this restaurant, your friend is here, or somebody you know is here, your Facebook or whatever, or somebody you don't even know. See, that's the, that's the thing about apps like this is what, what most people are not going to go through and set, have the settings. It's going to be open settings. So say, for instance, you're on social media and you have 5,000 friends, right? 5,000 people that you're connected with. And one of those 5,000 people is in the same building as you, whatever that building, it could be a store, it could be a restaurant, it could be a fitness place, it could be whatever. It will alert that person and you that y'all are in the same vicinity and because it's a tracking app, now is that what you want? You may not want that person to know you there. You may not, now all of a sudden, every person that you could know, plus if, it's, if the tracking app is as strong as it can be, it's going to be every individual that that person even knows because that's how it connects. Because then you see those pop-ups say, this is so-and-so who knows so-and-so. Do you want to connect to them? So this, this is something because I, I highlighted that you don't have to actually have a chip inserted in you. You just keep your phone with you. It'll do the same thing. This is just like a stage one. I'm going to actually put that. We will begin to talk about this is number one or stage, let's see, stage one, right? Uh, let's say stage one with that. So stage one is your phone. Stage two or three will be something more intrusive into you. Because one is people that want convenience. So it'll change. We talked about uh, unemployment, that when people were forced to stay at home, except for the people who were considered essential, half of the people in a city, state even, could be at home and half of them out because... There are people going out, don't get me wrong, but I mean actually working and gaining income because there are some companies that pay, like they pay teachers out, they already had that money allotted. So, but some companies said, we're going to put you on furlough. We're not going to send you out because we're not going to pay you, you know, or you can use all your vacation time or whatever. So, so we talked about these. We talked about it in our, in our area. Uh, we looked at and listened to uh, Bill Gates talk about... Um, it doesn't matter if, the, if this pandemic was created or not, or if it was, it was designed. Basically, at the end of the day, he wants to go more towards what's the solution for it. And we see that there are patents for it, that he actually has a way that uh, he can become, uh, not only is wealthy, because he has wealth. Wealth is not his issue, it's power. So I'm gonna put that in red. Power is his goal, and it's not just his. His power, but it's the power for those who are behind him and support him. To understand, he's not going to, there are people that are powerful and not going to let him have all the power. That's not how it works. When we saw the video where the three gentlemen were sitting in the room and they were talking about money, uh, they were titans in their industry, wealthy people. 
Uh, they're just a, 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 those are just three of many individuals that have great wealth uh, and influence in the world. But there are people who have more money and more influence than even those three uh, that were sitting in that, that room that the video we saw. Uh, we talked about the home gardening, growing your own on your porch or balcony. It's very critical that you can have, you can have uh, the, the experience of a garden in your home or on your, your living area with very little uh, space taken up. Talked about your health, your gut. Diet is critical to what's in uh, your gut, which in turn connects to your health. Because, and I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get this right, but you know what we eat, that food is turned into nourishment, that nourishment in turn nourishes our blood. Our blood in turn feeds our brain and our brain is where our thinking and, and that is and where the Lord speaks to us. So there is a spiritual connection to what we eat and take in to our ability to, to speak to the Lord. Because if you're eating foods that, that dull our senses and cause you to be sleepy, you're not able to hear the voice of the Lord because when you should be alert, uh, when you pray or when you study or spend that early morning time, you won't be able to because you'll be groggy and tired because of the diet that you have. Um, money, there's no such thing as free money. There just isn't. Uh, many of us have utilized the monies that have come in. I'm not going to say I hadn't utilized it. I had some bills. We took things we can take care of. But there's no such thing as free money. Um, that money has to come from somewhere, particularly from the fact that our government doesn't do anything to make the money except tax people and entities. The money just doesn't show up. And if they does show up, that means they printed it. And if they're printing it, then it makes what is already there less valuable. So again, once again, there's nothing free about it, right? So, uh, and then the idea that the Pope it can um, give advice on the direction of the economy of the United States or the world uh, is very critical. And then we talked about the death by fear. Right now is a time, just like it was in the late 1800s, of a, where there was a great awakening. Now, in the early part of the 2000s, it's time for us to have a, a great awakening and revival. The awakening is because we're asleep. We're slumbering like the ten virgins. There are five wise and five foolish. But understand, there was only ten. Ten out of hundreds. So don't think because there were five wise and five foolish that it's, again, a 50-50%. It's not it. It was half of only ten. Half of only ten, which makes five. So there was five. Let's go back. Of all the people living on the earth during Noah's time, there were only there was room for more people in the ark, but only what eight got in. When the angel came, and the angels came to take Lot and his family out, it had already been determined that there was not going to be more. There was not going to be there was going to be less than ten people leaving the city. We knew that there should have been four, Lot, his wife, and his two daughters. However, only Lot and his two daughters left, which made three out of a huge city, a huge metroplex, Sodom, Gomorrah, and then there are several other cities that were surrounding that. So understand, it's not about numbers. It is truly not about numbers. It is about those who are ready for judgment when it comes. When we look and, and, uh, and even when you think that there's, that there's just a few, the numbers aren't great, but there's still more. And I say that is, is because when Elijah said, I am the only one, the Lord said there are what, 5,000 that hadn't bowed a knee? But there were still many that, that did, did bow their knee. So I say that to say is, don't get caught up in numbers either. For the simple fact is, if you're not ready if you're not trusting in the Lord, you will find yourself on the wrong side of the number. It's just really that simple. Now, with that being the case, I'll give you a few pointers on what needs to be done 
to uh, prepare. It's real simple. One, prayer. It is critical that you pray daily for the baptism of the Holy Spirit because you need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. When the disciples waited in the upper room, those 10 days praying, coming under one accord, confessing their sins, and then when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they went out and did a mighty work. It is that Holy, it is the Holy Spirit descending upon them, which gave them the power to go out and do what they did. But the thing they had to do before was they had to first pray and be prepared. So that's the key. Pray, ask for the Holy Spirit, confess your sins, ask the Lord to show you the things that are hindering you from um, fully overcoming. And then, as they say, you like when you take a, when you get clothes, you wash, you wear them, you wash them, they rinse, and then you repeat. Just keep repeating the process. Because by doing it, if you ever think that you're prepared or ready in that process and you stop or you slow down, Satan will come in. That's just what he does. Because one is he's going to find every excuse, every reason to halt you. He's going to bring up your past. He's going to bring up uh, all that you have ever done, all that you could even possibly do or think of doing. And say, because the Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. So he's going to accuse you. Before man, he's going to accuse you before God, and he's going to accuse you to your face that you can't do it. But it is important now than it ever was. Not because there's this issue of a pandemic or, or the things that are happening in the world. It has always been an issue. We, have been, we are just that much closer to Christ's soon coming than we were last year when we were talking with religious liberty. The year before that, uh, when we had a different president, uh, all the way back, the time is just short, and the fact that we have, we, the Lord has given us this much time is a testament that he desires to see us prepared so that he can seal us in our forehead and that we can be ready. So again, like I had said before, what are we going to do? What are you going to do? As the Bible says for, uh, in Joshua, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for this day. I thank you that you have prepared a way that we can overcome this disease called sin. It's a sickness that permeates all of us. We're born with it. We're shaping in it. Yet, we can be reshaped. You are the potter, and we must yield to be the clay, allowing you to reshape us, to, to take out this rock, stony heart that we have and give us a soft, fleshly heart, a changed heart. You will renew a right spirit within us. But Lord, we must yield. So it's my prayer that each of us yield that we may be prepared for your soon coming. I thank you for this. In the holy and precious name of the Lord and Savior, amen.